Hi guys, it's Hannah from Winsome Cottage Garden. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so excited you could join us today. Today I have a couple fun projects outside with some spring crops that I'm really excited about getting started and getting actually out into the vegetable garden area. Uh, we'll kind of see how it goes. I'm going to take you outside. There's nothing on the radar uh, as it relates to rain. Um, as you can kind of see, it's very overcast. It's got something like a 5% chance of rain, which is, I think we can agree, very low. However, when I started moving stuff out here just a little bit ago, it was sprinkling. So I'm hoping everything works out. I'm hoping I can record this. Uh, it's a little chilly. I think I actually recorded something two days ago where it was gorgeous and I was so excited about it. And right now I'd say it's 50-ish, um, which isn't too bad. I'll take it. Here are some of the things I want to get out. Um, I have actually started this cabbage or I'm sorry not cabbage cauliflower beginning of March this odd thing appeared on it this week I don't know what it is I'm just gonna get it outside I think it's time it's been watering off we'll see how it goes I have two of them this is a snow crown cauliflower I also have snow peas uh, that I've been soaking for um, overnight and sugar snap peas I'm doing a lot more snow peas than I am sugar snap because I'll do another uh, sugar snap uh, round later this year oh hold on some dogs would like to come outside oh no they don't are you coming out or what that was rude oh well, this is just strange they don't actually use this pee pad unless it rains me and Maisie are both of the opinion that they melt in the rain because they're made of sugar and yesterday it rained all day um so i had that down they didn't actually use it but i was worried that they might have an accident because they would go outside and come right back in uh but they ended up actually using the bathroom but i think we have only one gardening dog today which is not surprising as i was saying before i was interrupted by the dogs i am doing something that's a little bit of an experiment this year like many of you i had some potatoes in my pantry that may have gone a little bit too long uh, i had some russets specifically that i went to go use them the other day and noticed they'd already sprouted uh, well, the other day, this is probably two weeks ago, and I thought, ooh, I'm going to try and see if they can make it until I'm ready to plant them outside. Uh, I'm going to show you them in just a second. I don't know if they're going to work, but I don't really lose anything by planting them because if I don't plant them, I'm just going to put them in the trash. So I'm going to stick them in the ground, see if anything happens, and if they don't, no big deal. I'm going to put them at the end of the row so if they, again, don't sprout, I can use that space for something else later this year. One thing that I know is gonna work is another bag of potatoes that I forgot I had. So these are the potatoes that I don't know if they're gonna work. They I cut them yesterday and they were okay. You can see that they've got some advanced rooting on them and they're a little bit squishier than I would like. So I'm gonna put these guys at the end of the row. The others that I have that have sprouted are uh, just in this bag of the little potato company. These are technically, I think, new potatoes. I actually have used these before. They're a mix of potatoes um, that you can see have a couple growth points that I'm just gonna plant these whole. Um, and I've got a big bag of them that will be more than what I need. I generally don't like buying seed potatoes um, for two reasons. One, a lot of times the quantities that you have to buy them in are a lot bigger than what I actually need. Um, I like growing potatoes. They're highly satisfying to dig up. It's kind of like digging for buried treasure. But it's not something that's on my must grow list. It's if I have happened to have something that like this has sprouted, I'll throw them in the ground to see what happens. Last year, I used grow bags um, with those little round potatoes um, at the cottage. And we ended up getting a ton of potatoes out of them, which is great for something that I was literally going to throw away. Um, the other potatoes, I don't know if they're going to do anything. Like, to be honest, I wouldn't be shocked if they rotted. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. Let's see if it works. Those are the main things I want to get planted today. If I have time, I'm also going to prune that rose that I think I've talked about a couple times because it's right in the entrance to the garden. It'll make it a lot easier, but it'll probably be determined by the weather. It's like ever so lightly sprinkling. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that I can get this project done. Mia did decide to come outside. I don't know how long she'll stay out, but she's here. Mia is actually a, a senior lady, as my vet called her the other day, which I actually took a little offense to. She is 10, uh, and she is a creature comfort dog. Uh, also slightly diva-ish, so some days she comes out, sometimes she doesn't. Half the time when she's outside, particularly if it's sunny, she'll lay down and will not come in. Uh, she just likes it, so I'm 
happy she decided to join us today. And I will not be shocked if she wants to go back inside early. Right out here is actually the area that the potatoes are gonna go. I'm gonna put them all the way at the back right now. This is actually used for storage of like tomato cages and whatnot. Uh, you can see that this is, I guess, a different view of the vegetable garden that you don't see a lot. So I am just going to plant these probably about six to eight inches deep. actually having a lot more than I thought and I filled this whole space with potatoes. I'm gonna go add a little um, Spoma fertilizer and then cover this with uh, some straw because I have a weed issue that I'm hoping to help suppress a little bit. Um, I use Easy Straw uh, to just cover and help suppress weeds. It includes uh, a natural pine resin, which you saw me water it down. We got a lot of rain yesterday. The soil is pretty wet. I didn't need to water them in, but I added some water to kind of just get the resin going so it kind of sticks in the uh, wind. We get some pretty big wind gusts, and if, with this stuff, I haven't had a problem with it rolling everywhere. Tack is what that thing is called. Uh, the other thing that I'll just say is this doesn't have any grass seed uh, or any weeds. I've used it for a couple of years, and I've been really happy with it. It's something that I've just bought at Lowe's. From there all the way down to this little red mark are those small potatoes, which will actually grow bigger than that. Those are new potatoes that were harvested early. And then from here on, I had enough of those mushy potatoes. I really don't know if those big ones are going to sprout. Um, they could be sometimes um, potatoes that are gotten from the grocery store have been sprayed with something to prevent them from sprouting to stop people doing what I'm doing right now. Um, so if they don't work out it could be because of that or it could be because that I let them go a little bit too long. Uh, either way I won't know if they're going to work until I plant them so I thought I would just see what happens. Next up is actually getting those peas planted. guys actually just got to see me start the um, sugar snap piece. I'm going to get the snow peas in. I also don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm going to be planting some bunching onions today. Uh, and I might start some kale as well because uh, they're all going in the same space. So here is one of the roses that I need to prune. Uh, and then you can see I've got this stretch. I'm going to put some kale right here that I might get started today. Then I'm going to put one tripod here in the space between bunching onions and another tripod here of um, snow peas. And then this area right here is where the cauliflower is gonna go. So I actually came inside and took a break for a little bit um, because it started like raining more than it had been. Um, it is still, I don't know if I'd call it raining. It's like heavily misting. But it's a little bit much for the camera, so I'm going to leave that inside. Uh, I'm going to go back out because I want to get it done, and I don't have a ton of daylight left today. So I'm going to set you guys up and hopefully let you see from a distance what I'm working on. And I've got my fingers crossed that um, so it'll stop raining and I can come bring you guys out and show you what I did.
I'm just so happy. My rose looks so much better than it did. It's still sprinkling a tiny bit, but it's not raining uh, or heavily misting as it was before. I actually have a couple more things left to seed, but I thought I'd bring you along for that journey so you could see it. And I wanted to show you what I did get done a little closer. So first step is actually this rose. It needed its spring pruning. It had like canes going in. Roses bloom off of the lateral canes. So you see the original canes that come up and then there are canes off the side. In fact, these new growth points are gonna be a flower next year. So in order to kind of get the most in the way of flowers, you don't want a ton of this. I have left, uh, you can see like one, two, three. I kind of go up each of these canes and I'll leave a couple of growth points. For this example, which I left to show you, uh, there's one growth point, two growth point, three growth point, and four growth point. There's actually a fifth one here. So I am going to cut right above that point. I've done that basically throughout this whole rose, taking off last year's growth and then winding the canes in my arbor. This rose, as you will see, is a lot more established. It's actually reaching the top in a couple canes than this rose. And that's because it just gets a lot more sun. This rose isn't bad by any stretch, but I left a couple on this one that I probably wouldn't have left on the other. The other thing that I, you probably noticed was I have rose gloves that I highly recommend anyone use when they're pruning. It just saves your hands. They're leather, they're really thick, and they go all the way up basically to your elbow, and it just makes it a much more pleasant experience. They are thick gloves because they're protecting you, which means you lose a little bit of your dexterity, but it's worth it to prevent scratches. Um, so this rose is done. I did haul out some rose tone, which I'm gonna apply to this area before I fully put it to bed. Um, I pruned it because the last area I need to seed is actually a, a couple varieties of kale. And the kale is actually gonna go right here. So I have a small patch that I do. Uh, it's kind of nice because this is a great area. It gets shaded a little bit, so it help prevent, helps prevent it from bolting in the summer. And it's an odd shape uh, that I thought would fit in here. It also won't prevent anything uh, growing with the rose. Last year, I actually put a tomato cage here with a tomato, which was a mistake. Uh, I constantly was fighting with the rose wanting to get into the cage and then the, the tomato wanting to grow into the rose. And it, there probably wasn't enough airflow around any of them. So it was a bad idea that I'm hoping to avoid this year. The other thing that you could see me do is putting these uh, teepees in. I think I said I got these on Wayfair. They were a couple years ago. I don't expect them to last forever. Um, I'm in slightly close quarters, so it's hard to show you. Um, but they're, you know, they work well. I think they're kind of cool. Uh, and I have put snow peas on these guys. What I did is I just kind of expanded them. And then in each of the corners, I have an extra bamboo cane that I have that I put it in to help add a little stability. So that goes all the way down and into the corners. So all the way around here, I have uh, planted two uh, snow peas per little spot where they come down. And in the middle, I actually planted some spring onions or bunching onions uh, to fill that space and it, it'll probably give me enough fresh onions for the whole summer, which is exciting. This was just another uh, snow pea and then this is where the two cauliflowers ended up. They're supposed to be about 18 inches apart, so this guy is probably a tiny bit close to the fence. but. I've never grown cauliflower before. I thought I would try it, see if it was a mistake. This is the one that I showed you earlier. I don't know if I touched it and it reacted badly, but eh, I figured I'd do, see what happens. I'm gonna fertilize these guys, and then I'm actually gonna give them um, a dome for the next couple of days. I'll try and take them off just to get them. They've been hardening off during the day, but to kind of provide a tiny bit of extra protection. These are brassicas. Um, most of the things that I'm planting. So they're actually meant for cool weather crops, which is great for a place like me where I'm zone 5B. Your average last frost date is mid-May. I don't move a lot of my really tender stuff out uh, until the last known frost date, which is like May 27th. It's about 
90% of the time the frost date has passed. Technically, um, there's some years that there's already the frost, they've already experienced their last frost date now. What you should do if you don't know when your last frost date is to go to your local gardener's extension office. If you're in Michigan, it's most likely through Michigan State. And they have a list of based on zip code or your closest city, when your last frost date would be, which really helps you decide when to put plants outside. The other thing I just wanted to briefly show you, if it's raining again, so hopefully I'll be able to, is what's in these um, row covers, because you could probably see them in some of the videos, and I don't know if I've actually shared at all what they are. So these are row covers from Gardner Supply Company. I buy a lot of stuff from them. Obviously, I'm a brand new channel. I'm not sponsored. I bought these, but um, these are their growth accelerator covers. I actually bought these to go on the... Um, water trough planters I have on my driveway for the cool weather crops. Uh, they were way too big. Even though I knew they were about four foot, they like kind of went over the trough oddly because the trough is rounded and these are square. I didn't know how effective they would be. So I jerry rigged my own row covers as you've seen. Uh, and I'll link the video below if you haven't seen so you can see them. And then these guys, I was like, well, I had some um, anemone bulbs and bulbs, corms whatever they're called, anemones. I also had a couple of ranunculus corms. I actually have spent a lot of time. Oh. I was gonna say that there's nothing to see, but I think there is. So let's see, I am gonna lift it to show you. Oh, and I guess I can show you how they go, these go into the ground. These just have, these have some loops in them. <gasps> there's actually a lot more than I thought. Well, they don't look as impressive here, but if you look closely, you can see a lot of babies. I actually didn't plant these all that long ago. I'm gonna have to look up. Uh, but I think I have about 25 corms in here. Uh, and this is the bridal mix ranunculus. I think I made so, oh, so excited about this. So the way these work, you can kind of see there's one right here. They've got loops that I've attached a landscape staple. So I put it down like this and then I just take my landscape staples and pop them down into the soil. They just fit down over like that. What's really interesting about this design that I read on their website is, this is the first year I've used it. This is the greenhouse plastic. It's got this mesh, which means it helps trap warm air, but it also lets hot air escape. So I don't have to worry about popping these off every day, which is really, really nice. They're also supposed to be able to stay on for longer and just help accelerate the growth, which means I should get blooms faster. So I'm excited about that. So that was ranunculus. I'm pretty sure this is ranunculus too. I think this is the passion mix ranunculus. And I can see a similar stuff to the other ones. And that is really exciting. I'm not gonna lift it because it is raining. And then this guy over here is the third one, is anemones. I don't really see anything. At least I don't think I do. There's a couple like little small things, but to me they look more like seedlings that have popped up. This is the first crush anemone mix. Um, and all of the ranunculus and anemone corms, bulbs, whatever they're called, uh, I bought at Eden Brothers. Um, yeah, so all that's left to do in this area is to add the little domes over the cauliflower, get this kale seeds in the ground. I'm kale gonna seeds will germinate around 45 degrees uh, soil temperature. So um, my days are in the 40s and 50s, mostly 50s as of late, but I'm not sure well, it's getting down into the 40s at night. So I'm gonna go get my soil thermometer and just see what temperature it is. This is actually meant for uh, worms, as you might be able to guess. And you can see that it is drop it. The soil is above 50 degrees, which means they will germinate, which means I can definitely plant these now. Um, so I'm going to plant two each of Ragged Jack and two each of um, Scotch Curled Kale and then one Dinosaur Kale. It is actually raining again. So what I'm going to do is go stick you up somewhere else, finish up what I need to do and kind of hopefully be able to show you what the last thing looks like. So it's once again paused in the rain. And I can show you what I did in the vegetable garden. But before I do that, I really want to show you what these um, driveway beds look like. 
because I think it's only been about a week since I showed these to you and it's just it's so amazing how much everything has just sprung up. Isn't this just gorgeous? Um, you can see I've actually removed the covers because I only put them on when it drops below 40 at night and it's looking like a good chunk of this week is going to be above that. Uh, so you can see just how everything has popped up. Another reason I removed the covers is there was a little excess fabric right here that I think has stunted some of these guys. So hopefully um, they will pop up now that they've got some air. But like you can see here the arugula looks fantastic. The mustard greens look good. These are radishes. Spinach is beginning to put on its first true leaves which is exciting this is a salad mix that was kind of old so i'm not surprised that it wasn't great germ but it's here that's exciting some little gem lettuce also they haven't changed much but i really feel like this um, butter lettuce has and look some more true leaves that's like a speckled kind that i really love and i think it's just beautiful and B, it's tasty. I planted them really thickly because I'm going to harvest them young and eat them, but then I can also let them grow up a little bit. Uh, and I don't know if I actually said this, but that, um, the straw that I use is actually main purpose is used in, um, grass seeding. So it will, it, how it works is it helps create like a nice environment for germination and then they'll push their way through, but it also helps prevent any seeds that might be in the environment from reaching the soil and will cut down on germination. So it really helps me keep up on weeding, especially while the plants are young. Um, I keep my gardens covered with that um, food grade plastic uh, after I clean them up in the fall to just help keep weeds down because there's a lot of trees, there's a lot of other stuff around me and it just makes life a heck of a lot easier and it keeps the soil nice. You wouldn't believe the number of worms that I came across today. It's beginning to look like a real vegetable garden. The rose looks better, I've already shown you that. We kind of checked in and everything, but look at this. It just looks so neat put together. I got all that stuff labeled let me clear a label here in here because otherwise i'll be like where did i put them um so that's good kale's planted the peas are planted the spring onions are planted and then i got these guys in um what's nice about these is if it was like something i didn't know if i was going to be able to uncover them tomorrow or whatnot you could undo this and then they get a little moisture i should have thought a little bit better about placement of that plant and how this was gonna fit, but it'll work. I'm not gonna keep these on for long. It's just gonna be the next couple nights to help them adjust. I'm really thrilled with how everything is looking. It's looking like a real garden slowly and less of a, like a, a plastic wasteland. Um, and I'm excited. I'll probably be checking these daily for way too long. They're not gonna germinate for like a week, but you know, I'll peek at them, especially now that I know that the ranunculus have started poking through. I think that this potato patch over here is gonna be a great use of that space. It's something that I like to put crops that I plant them and then I don't have to do anything with them until it's time to harvest. Last year I did corn there, which was kind of fun. I used the corn stalks in the fall, but it was a little bit much. I know it was a bit of an odd day. It's, I actually don't know if I'm colder or it's warmer. I feel like it's warmer, but it could be just, I've been out here way too long. Um, but I'm still thrilled that even though it was rainy and whatnot, I was able to get these things in the ground and get the clock started. Um, I've grown these for a couple of years. I'm by no means an expert. I just am really enjoying and seeing what happens. And I wanted to bring you guys along too. So hopefully you guys learned something new and we'll be checking in on these things throughout the summer and I can't wait to see how they grow. Thanks for joining me guys today. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. I can't be the only one who does these because it's what's handy in the kitchen and then is like, ugh, I don't want all this dirt in my sink. But I also don't want to get the hose back out because I just disconnected it. So I'm trying to rinse them in the rain water that's collected here. Okay, that's not bad. That can go in my sink.